Jonathan, welcome to Kenya's biggest conversation. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy mm -hmm. New Year. And thank you for welcoming me back. Mm -hmm. I'm glad that you guys have all got across to the New Year. Mm -hmm. And it's good to see you all. Good to see you, man. Good mm -hmm. to see you too. Good to see you too. And we understand you've been busy. Eh. Eh? <laughs> okay. I still am. But eh? yes, yes. Busy I have been. We have been. For the past, uh, we started filming in, uh, let's see, in June, we took a break for the for the elections, and then now came back again in in late August, mm -hmm. early September, mm -hmm. to continue filming what we are now here to talk about today, the last door. All right. Mm -hmm. So this Sunday, 8 p.m. on Maisha Magic Plus, you'll be able to watch this new series by John Alan Namu and African Censored. It's Paruanja Lamlango Amwisho. <laughs> Oh gosh, I have an interesting <laughs> story about the, about, Paruanja. about Paruanja. You know they did a series on Paru, Paruanja la Mihadarat. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes, yes. No, uh -huh. I, I, Paruanja and all of the different names that Moha used to come you up know? with. <laughs> like sometimes we'd be sitting in, in a room not too far from over here. Mm. We'd be sitting down and uh, so I've come up with my with my name for my story. Mm. And then Moha has gone, he's taken a walk and he comes back and he's like, "Ah, sasa my guys, huh?" We are calling this thing Paruanja la Mihadarati. And then you look at him, oh, what is Paruanja? Paruanja. First of all. <laughs> zengwe zengwe bandarini. <laughs> like, I'm like, yo, um, do, do, are we doing the same story? <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, yeah. But, but uh, the last door, um, I mean, in terms of names, maybe I can start there. Yeah. So the, it's a storytelling device, essentially, um, where we're using the last door as an analogy for perhaps the last place where a person was seen alive or the last, mm. you know, event before <clears throat> a crime was committed mm. or, you know, um, events that we now have come to know took place. Mm. So it's, it's really a storytelling device and it's a nice way to start sometimes in the middle of the story, sometimes at the beginning, mm. sometimes you start from the end and go backwards. But um, the point of the of the series is is really to I guess reintroduce the country to um, sort of in depth um, investigative or in depth um, storytelling around crimes that have happened in this country. Uh, this was a staple for KTN for for a number of years, so people are not unfamiliar and people are you know not unfamiliar with with the genre. Mm. But really to try and and reintroduce that and and you know put some oomph in terms of uh, storytelling, scripting, um, visuals, and give people a good experience of what their country is perhaps albeit from a you know a point of view of difficult things to talk about mm. and it's also some way of you know perhaps giving people who are involved in these crimes some sort of catharsis um and uh and closure um at least that's what i hope is it cases that are ongoing or cold cases some are, some are ongoing mm. some are cold um so it's an eight-part series uh, and so, for instance, uh, our premier our premier episode is about uh, Tekram Wigai mm -hmm. and uh, and the death of Tekram Wigai in uh, in 2020. Um, that, of course, is ongoing mm -hmm. because there's an inquest that um, that that should be concluded should have been concluded last September, um, but we're waiting to hear what the ruling is. Mm -hmm. um, there are cold cases like um, uh, Rivayala. Mm -hmm. There are a number of cold cases there. Uh, that can't be pursued for a lack of evidence or are not being pursued for um i don't know maybe maybe the the president hinted at it yesterday in his interview um and 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 then there's also certain other cases that we've picked up because they are topical for right. instance the issue of femicide mm -hmm. is a huge problem in this country and mm -hmm. and especially since 2020 mm -hmm. has really ratcheted up so women um are in danger simply because they are women mm. um, and uh, especially women in relationships um, are, have been in danger for a long time. You've seen what happened with these young girls from uh, KU mm -hmm. uh, just the other day. So we have stories like that. Mm -hmm. And then of course there's the, 
there's there's also some of those that are just mysterious yeah. disappearances without a trace so i'm not going to give it the whole game away but mm. you sure. have a like a mixed bag of of the kinds mm. of stories that we pursue yeah mm. it would appear and maybe mm -hmm. stop me if i'm wrong but that for the cases or the stories that you're telling yeah unfortunately are for mm. individuals whose whose lives have ended in death yes unfortunately unfortunately why well that's that's a that's a big question why so how we had originally thought of the the last door as a series would have been um one where it either led to some sort of great event in a person's life mm -hmm. or some tragic event but how we pitched it um when we went to uh to uh, maisha magic was as a true crime series mm -hmm. so you know with true crime that many times it has to you know focus on 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 a tragic event yeah. and trying to unravel those things and the reason being that um, in as much as the things that happen in a very fast paced way so today one person will die another day someone else will die we never really get to connect um, the meaning of these deaths w in and of themselves mm -hmm. but also as connected to like the wider problems or trends that are causing these kinds of things mm -hmm. so for instance with um, with the Riviala story mm -hmm. right so that's a perfect analogy for the very serious problem we've been having with enforced disappearances and some might say police killings and that 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 series of deaths the, those series of murders mm. have forced us to really take a hard look at ourselves and consider what our policing approach is what what especially when it comes to people who perhaps don't have the the kind of background or credibility or credentials that you know the normal upstanding citizens do how yeah. do we deal with the worst of the worst mm. and that's that's a very big question mm. to consider in a country like this mm. yeah mm. so how far back do you do you go and how did you make that decision um how far back is 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 a tough one so we we've tried to we've tried to include cases that that do go you know some ways back but the problem with that, mm. um, and, and this is a challenge, especially for documentary um, filmmaking, is archive footage. Mm. What can you show? Yeah. Right? So you'd think that um, a newspaper cutting or a headline should be enough to expand into a, into a huge story. Sometimes it's not. Just mm. the practicability of it um, would require a lot more time than we'd have to be able to tell those stories from, from uh, long, long ago. But long time ago but um you know god willing if there's a second season that's kind of what we want to invest in so a lot of the stories ha are a lot more current but i think all the benefit of that is that um it's in people's lived experiences over the past 10 years over the past five years mm. and so they remember something about the case so the audience will relate they'll relate and and because a lot of these deaths for instance with the tekra death are, are mm. fairly current mm. yeah um there'll be some things that people might have missed there'll be some context that's missing um there'll be sides to those stories that haven't been heard um for instance i don't think that uh, tabitha karanja has had as in-depth an interview that than you know the one that we had with her mm. uh, neither has annalisa and that side <coughs> of the family mm. yeah. and we do go back to omar and and really talk to him and you know some of the people who are also involved in the case so mm. that kind of currency should be able to deliver to people um an interest yeah in that i remember this case i wonder how it wound up and oh this is the story behind what was going on at the time yeah. john what 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 uh motivated you to mm -hmm. think of starting and working on this series huh. you guys are asking the very deep questions today <laughs> um what motivated me was this uh we at, at africa uncensored have um skill sets in investigative journalism in um, explainer journalism etc but one of the skill sets that every journalist has or should have is a storytelling skill set and so what I was trying to do was to dissect the kinds of skills that I have and see whether it can fit into <clears throat> perhaps a different genre that then I've, then I've really done or been used to. So it, this is really an exploration of what else I can do with the skills that I have. Um, 
And then for the series itself, it's something that I actually thought up when I was here. Mm. So, you know, in late 2014, early 2015, we were speaking with um, a producer, a friend of mine who, who's since moved on to BBC. And we were trying to think about ways in which we can enliven the kind of current affairs um, things that we are covering mm. and give people perhaps a more um, it's it's not so much in a cold face of current affairs news etc but go back and try and explain and tell full stories about um, some of the things that have happened in our past our recent past so then that's where the idea was born um, the motivation for everything that we'll do at Africa Uncensored is um, um, and I forgot to mention, this is also something that's a big interest um, point for, for members of the audience, members mm. of our audience. So if people are interested in it, it's not so much that they're not interested in the news, perhaps they're interested in a retelling yeah. of our current affairs that, that um, we, within the mainstream legacy media, alternative media, haven't been used to doing. Mm. So that's where it was born, and that's kind of the trajectory that we want to take. We want to start and continue to tell stories that mean something to people, but really infuse the skills that we have as journalists to ensure that it's a very factual but interesting mm. retelling of, of that content. Yeah. So the, the thing is, I th with with the society that we currently live in, mm. unfortunately, there is a there is a gap mm -hmm. um, of information. Yeah. Especially when it comes to things like this. I watched the trailer, mm -hmm. and I believe there's one woman who said. <clears throat> just from her explanation said i will not rest mm. until i get justice yeah right and uh, that is for many people who you may not have many many people mm. of course who may have not been interviewed they are looking for the opportunity to hear the details mm -hmm. of what happened yeah in the loss of their loved one or the disappearance of the loved one or whatever mm. Mm -hmm. right so you doing this series then now fortunately or unfortunately however you want to look at it mm -hmm. starts to fill a gap mm. for people who don't have the answers the security agencies who may be working on an investigation yeah. in most cases will not tell you the ins and outs the ins and outs mm. so here you are doing this yeah the question is though then john that uh, the demand then on mm -hmm. you to tell more stories mm. could possibly grow infinitely so does does this go beyond tv mm. making oh yeah to then be able to say okay then let's tell more just mm. from this you know storytelling aspect of a journalist that you talked about for sure you know um if if there's something that i'm and have been passionate about for a long long time is is for us to have some sort of archive of some of the things that have happened in this country and and like a real truthful telling of 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 some of the things that have taken place because they're so important and they inform so much about how we live and how we experience life mm. I'll, I'll take you back even just to to 10 years ago 2013 it, guys don't realize just how much of a sea change westgate the westgate attack was mm. right in in terms of how we live in an in an everyday yeah. way yeah um you mentioned justice mm. um the lady on there lost her daughter mm. and the justice system is is a place that feels like this nebulous expanse of corridors and high-powered people that the ordinary person will never be able to interact with. Mm. So when you find a person who's who's been victimized of had had their relatives victimized by a crime like this, it offers us as journalists an opportunity to explain not just their story but the larger narrative about some of these things, mm. these questions of justice. Does it put pressure on us? Yes. I mean, even now, um, even without the series having run, there's so much demand. Um, I'm getting in my in my in my inbox um, for people look into this, look into that. What's happening here? I want to understand this. Yeah. And and I think what the demand is not so much for an event, mm. but it's speaking to a, um, I think something that we need to respond to as a media is how do we help our audiences make sense of 
their lives on a daily basis mm. are we explaining things to them properly are we breaking down complex information are we getting the people who perhaps have the answers in front mm. of them to be able to do that and then what formats are we doing so so yeah. are we doing it on tiktok are we doing it here on a radio you, you show you see mm. this could very well have been a, a document this conversation mm. could very well have been a documentary but it's feeding a specific audience mm. people who are going to work people who like to listen to this show so how do we keep on just plugging into yeah. those gaps as as a mainstream and how do we <coughs> ensure that our audience is satisfied and that they can look back 10 15 years from now mm. see the way you said you mentioned parwanja if someone types in parwanja they'll understand gosh this is what was happening in 2004 with mm-hmm. drugs in our country mm. you understand and then it it starts to let you know oh okay this is why what's happening today has certain significance so that's why it's so important mm-hmm. for us mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. it's connecting those dots it is so the the question that someone would have mm-hmm. is what to expect mm. from watching a series am i going to get the answers mm-hmm. or are you just bringing all sides of the questions and throwing the questions out there mm-hmm. and at the end of the day tell me mm. make your own determination on what you think happened it's do both. i get to know yeah what so what happened it's both and mm. so um we do get all sides of the story or as many as we can mm-hmm. to ensure that the certain perspectives that you haven't heard that will inform what your judgment of a situation is for instance like with with this premiere episode um there will be some that explain to you the reasons why certain things had to happen mm. for instance with the with the rivayala episode mm. there'll be some that go back and or or some that are you know sort of like in step with current investigations that show you the face of a real problem um i i'd mentioned femicide as yeah. an example yeah so it's both and 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 the expectation that i think people should come to this um to watching this show with is am i going to be able to broaden my knowledge about a specific story but more broadly about a specific issue um because even how we we sort of like broke down um each episode in terms of the the storytelling bible that we have is that there, there is a crime there is a context there possibly is a narrative that people went with that maybe isn't true mm. then there's a larger issue then now we come back to the crime itself so those four or five areas sort of like help you get a like a very good understanding of it if i was to compare um story storytelling styles uh this is <laughs> where where news is fast food mm. this is a full <laughs> meal you understand <laughs> yeah. yeah so you know with a full meal you sit down with it you, you, you don't eat it on the go mm-hmm. yeah. yeah so yeah that's how i'd, I'd explain it yeah. well, all right let's take a break break oh, yes all right okay. we'll be back <coughs> it's half past eight. john alan namu investigative journalist and ceo of african sun studies here with us today we are talking about the last door this is a show that premieres on maisha magic plus this sunday from 8 p.m how long is an episode 45 minutes 45 minutes mm. so a, a TV one hour mm. it's a full meal so you sit down and actually watch and you get to understand some of those things that you know happened but you never really know what happened behind the happening of the happening of the happenings <laughs> John Alan will be telling us the happening of the happening mm. that is what we'll be watching on DSTV make sure that you get your subscription for DSTV Maisha Magic Plus is on DSTV it's your moment and don't miss out on the last door This is the Situation Room, the only way to start your day. Our guest this morning, John Alan Namu, celebrated investigative journalist and CEO of Africa Uncensored, who's been working since June last year on a series that's premiering on Maisha Magic Plus this Sunday, 8 p.m. and showing every other Sunday at 8 p.m. You're starting with eight episodes. Yes. So for the next yes. two months, so we are, your, our Sundays sorted. Are, are sorted. Yeah. <laughs> It's called The Last Door. it looks back at those crime true crimes that have taken place in the country where we have no answers and you seek to un- to get us to understand what happened yeah you know one of the other channels on dstv is ci mm. and of course it's very popular mm. with a certain gender 
Likes to understand how crimes take place. Do 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 you know what he's talking about? I have, or who? I have no, no idea. idea. You you don't know, right? <laughs> no, nah, right? <laughs> yeah. Are we expecting to see that kind of thing on on the last door, where you know uh-huh. there is it's narrated, there is some dramatization, mm-hmm. there is speaking to investigators, speaking to prosecutors, maybe yeah. speaking to relatives and such. Well, yeah, I I, th- I think to a certain extent that that you will there will be some reenactments, there will be some reconstruction, um, for for there will be speaking to investigators, lawyers in some episodes, um, but the main focal point for us has always been the the people closest to the to the crimes. Um, so in that way, it's not that <clears throat> excuse me, it's not that different in terms of the kinds of people that we speak to to shows on investigative you know i think it's called yeah the ci and it's then there's investigative I, dis- discovery the investigative mm-hmm. discovery yeah, yeah. so <clears throat> it's not it's not that different um i think what what the difference is is um in i guess the, the narration um fortunately or unfortunately you will see some of me mm. on, on, <laughs> on, on on screen um I, I battled with that actually. Um, no, it's good. It gives yeah. you authenticity. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, but it's but, a journal uh, and now. Well, yeah, yeah. 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 I'm gonna watch it. But yeah. but isn't the voice enough? Like no. you and Mimi no. no. uh, no. <laughs> you must see me. You, uh, in in, in, in mm-hmm. TV and movie dramas, uh, you find producers also making an appearance in uh, the uh, movie. We we must be seen. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So it's not. Uh, <laughs> but it's something I need yeah. to ask when you talk yeah. about the people you've interviewed. Mm-hmm. Do you also interview mental health specialists? Yes, for for some of those for some of the episodes yes we do. Um both on camera and also just for context. Mm-hmm. Um like some of the crimes that that um, we look into mm-hmm. are so shocking. <laughs> like in the way they took place. Mm-hmm. Um like uh, that you have to get that kind of um explanation that kind of insight as to why somebody would do you know would do that or would perpetrate that and especially the psychological aspect is is really interesting and you know maybe let me even go back to like a series that we were doing on uh, Maisha on Maisha Magic it was called Maisha Mkanda mm. and uh, in that we also looked into like a lot of um some of these crimes remember this uh, this young man who was uh, killing uh, young boys yeah um across the country and yeah. was finally arrested then ran away from the police station then gets so, killed so we were told <laughs> well so we were told yeah. we only know that he yes. was in the police station the next and then thing he's somewhere he in west end being yes. stoned to death yeah, yeah. yeah. and uh, stoned to death in the house of i think one of his former teachers yeah, yeah. you know um it's crazy but speaking to um um forensic pathology not forensic pathologist forensic um, psychologists you understand that there are certain things about that person for instance mm. that and serial killers that that are very important to understand Look, like for instance he used to say that he would bury um his victims next to each other and bring potential victims to strangle them to death there because he liked the smell of the of the decomposing, decomposing body and that actually is like a trend with serial killers there'll be things that they do there'll be habits that they form mm. within the crimes themselves that are pointers to some sort of um you know um sociopathic behavior um so so with this with this series we are also sort of like trying to explain why some of these things have happened how they happen but sometimes you just don't have the answers yeah mm-hmm. right um there are some crimes for instance where a person wakes up and has no memory of having perpetrated the crime so to the the family members of the victims they'll be like man this guy is guilty as sin mm-hmm. but the guy himself has absolutely no memory of what has happened yeah doesn't know how it could have come to have happened and and that's also like a you know it's a mental phenomenon where sometimes maybe you just block out traumatic um mm-hmm. e- events and that happens a lot with children actually children who witness traumatic events will 
will really subdue those memories for a long time and then they get unlocked in yeah. you know different different times of their lives mm -hmm. yeah this takes i mean to, to do obviously mm -hmm. i mean if you're just looking at t tv generally it yeah. takes a lot mm. uh, whether we're talking about resources human resources um financial resources mm -hmm. everything that it takes to put a journalistic piece together mm. I mean, it's huge. And also time. It yeah. takes a lot of time to do this. One would think, okay, well, what is it, John? Mm. You take a camera and you stick it in front of somebody. And you're, mm. We're talking about months and months of, mm -hmm. you know, uh, of this uh, in order to, to, to get it done and to get one story. Yeah. Um, how mm -hmm. then are you able to get this done? And what does it mean? Mm. Uh, for those who would want to be able to tell a story but are not able to obviously because of the resource mm. demand across financial human that's a good question um the how eh, well lots of hard work mm. lots of traveling lots of um um hours extra hours in the office scripting and um and i think at this point can i just give a quick shout out mm. to to some of the guys in in the team uh, there's elijah kanye um steve biko john gaduna uh, tim waura um and and you know catherine wema and and many of the people who are behind um the last door who will not be seen are all a part of this mm. so there's that team effort um, that allows for certain things to go quicker. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, if if I can't be in the field, um, Elijah, who's a producer in his own right, can go and do an interview um, for me and then come back. Um, graphics can be done to be able to fill in certain spaces. But to your question about how to get this done if you don't have the resources, um, start with what you have. That that's that's always been my 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 go-to answer. Mm -hmm. Start with what you have because you're never going to have enough. Even now, mm. I can tell you there's so many things I wish <laughs> I would have had mm -hmm. to be able to just, you know, just like make, just tweak this, A make it bit. better, like yeah. mm. tighten. But no story is ever, you know, like 100% perfect, especially to the producer. But the point is, start with what you have. If all you can do is record voice notes and send them on WhatsApp and create a story out of that, yeah. start there. Mm. Because you never know how these stories will be consumed and how they'll impact um, um, your audience. And from there, once you're able to start to improve your skill set, you'll find that the resources mm. find you. Mm. You'll find that you'll be able to use different things, um, you know, uh, uh, to you'll be able to, to, to stretch your shillings a lot, a lot further, let me say that, uh, and use different storytelling devices to get around some of the challenges that we have. Mm -hmm. But, Ndu, if you will, um, I think one of the more, uh, maybe, maybe this is a question that you are going to ask, but one of the things that I'm glad that this story is on Maisha Magic um, and on this platform, um, one of the things that, that I've always reflected upon is just how difficult it is for content creators mm. for people who are in this space mm. to just create to just do things and be allowed to say like if i want to do investigations that's all i want to do and just focus on yeah. it yeah it's also a question of the environment in which we are mm -hmm. where there is a demand but the way the industry has been geared is to meet perhaps a different kind of demand and not focus on the content itself, on the storytelling itself. Mm -hmm. And so you can only get so far sometimes. Mm -hmm. and, and I think it's important to acknowledge that. Um, whereas I want to be this happy, sunshiny guy and say, start with what you have. Yeah. It's important to acknowledge that you can only get so far. Mm -hmm. And then you can't get any further because there's certain things that you just can't do without money. Yeah. There's certain stories that you just can't tell without money. Mm -hmm. Like to put together a proper reenactment takes actors, it takes different it takes directors, it yeah. takes all sorts of an things. Entire production. It's yeah. an entire production within a production. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? And if you want to be able to really tell that story well, you yeah, can't yeah, run yeah, away from, run it. from it. You need yeah. money. Mm -hmm. And my hope is that 2023 going forward we can all figure out as media how to return 
like content and and strong content mm. be it journalistic or otherwise mm. to the center to the focus of of what we do what, yeah. um content and audience so that everybody who's working has that in mind and every resource is then you know availed to ensure that we really have successful mm -hmm. stuff um all across every channel um not just on tv but online etc yeah right uh final thing i'll say about that is be, i think what what things like tiktok and instagram and all of these things have taught us is that you can really do a lot with your phone mm. you can mm. really do a huge amount with your phone mm. and there are people who have grown from just a one man band into proper production houses yeah. simply because they have this mm. yeah one of the guys that i follow on youtube is a nigerian um like me and my kids love to watch his stuff mm. he's a nigerian um vlogger who tours different african a vlog uh, a video, a video blogger. blogger yeah so city mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, i'm tempted to side with uh, with with, with <coughs> eric and, and do um in oh. their earlier comments <laughs> disparaging comments about you Your but i will restrain myself no no, no, no. Yes. let me assist you yes Suc succumb to the temptation okay. <laughs> <laughs> so yes he's a he's a, he's, a, he's a vlogger and so he goes around africa africa vlogging. just showing us different african cities yeah. mm. and i i think he just does it him and one person yeah. mm. and it's very very interesting what is it i i think it's Tayo is it the guy who was with the uh, Alex Chamwara at some point in Kenya? I don't know. I don't know. Well, Maybe he might be. I'll I'll check out his name and I'll give it I'll I'll give you the name. I think it's Tayo he somewhere. He's Tayo, but Tayo. I can't remember the yeah. other name, but he does that. Yeah. He's going around different. And yeah. and we love watching it. Yeah. Mm. And I can tell you that is him who of course understands how to drone, pro possibly a cameraman, that's it. Mm. Right? but the content that he's creating now he's getting partnerships I, i think recently he was in durban because south africa um the the south african tourism ministry had taken him there you know he's been to mombasa he's been to namib he's been everywhere mm. and whether people see it or not that guy is actually chronicling a very important part of our culture and our yeah. history mm -hmm. and our current affairs yeah. he's showing us sides of africa that we've never seen absolutely and it's important to have those kind of empowering images out there mm -hmm. so me as a content creator as a as a as a journalist who does true crime mm -hmm. i'm also sort of like showing you like a sliver of mm -hmm. what our society is yep. but these things put together paint you know create a very beautiful mosaic mm -hmm. about who we are Indeed. and who we were and who we will be okay. and that i think is the the, the real importance mm. of being brave enough to just do what you what you can with what you have yeah. start because you don't know what part of the story that you're mm. threading together M maybe you mentioned it but i missed it mm -hmm. did you also get to interview mm -hmm. members of the judiciary the security and the intelligence yes. community yes i did you did eh? some some of course for obvious reasons um we had to do of um anonymously yes um because they're revealing certain things about crimes that uh, that they can't just come up they can't rock up and say hey, yeah mm. me i know this about this crime <laughs> eh? mm. and it actually happened like this mm. um so some will be on camera some will be um off camera some will be some have provided context some you will see um the the hope here is that when you sit down to watch this documentary and you're like hmm i wonder what the cop said about this then now the you know the there's comes. an answer from the cops mm -hmm. or someone from intelligence or someone from the judiciary has fed us with a bit of information or even family members have given us access to things that you wouldn't ordinarily see yeah. mm. i'll tell you like there's one that we are concluding now mm. i've been able to see some stuff and it's just like if i showed you <laughs> some of the things that that i've seen just in the course of doing this series you you'd be you'd have your mind blown mm. just about just how things happen in yeah. this country yeah so john mm. i mean mm -hmm. you've in the last i mean many years obviously yeah. the stories that you have done have been digging into mm -hmm. the unknown and sometimes dangerous i mean we've yeah. talked about how you've had to maybe sometimes you know protect your family yeah uh, for threats and things like that 
I mean, this is not, it's not much further away with mm. this kind of, so are you seeing the same kind of dangers in telling these stories? I mean, and um, look, even mm. with those dangers, you still waded through the waters, right, John? Yeah. Um, so now with this, are you still seeing th that potential uh, danger for you? Well, not, not for me directly. Mm. Um, my, my, concern with with uh, some of the 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 people that we interview or potential interviewees in this series is is how exposed that they they might be mm -hmm. so we really think hard about okay um this person is willing to offer up this information but what happens tomorrow yeah after the the episode is done yeah um the exposure can protect you only so much mm. and so there are some stories we've decided look it's not worth telling at this at this point in time there's too much um danger um that that a person could you know be exposed to sometimes it's just the fact that it would you know significantly change um the the perception of this person in in society both positively and negatively and sometimes you just have to take a step back but fortunately this series hasn't been the sort where we've been in um like hairy situations mm. Mm. but who knows like i said if there's a season two you never know where we will go yeah. um uh, and i'm not not to be flippant about it uh, but but uh, certainly what we what we are trying to do is take our precautions and and make sure that even as we tell these stories um the crew is safe the people who are, we are interviewing is safe and the experience for the audience is one where they can live almost vicariously through these kinds of experiences or get to sort of emote but not you know not have people just risk their lives um or get their lives put in danger yeah. because of that yeah, yeah. Mm. let's talk about multi-choice yeah um, we've hosted several people from multi-choice including the ceo mm -hmm. and one of the things that she talked about is how much investment that they put in making sure that there's diverse content mm. that's available to viewers and that investment is also financial mm -hmm. now if we just take a step back into how this show gets to premiere on sunday mm. uh what's the journey like is it you who approach mm -hmm. maisha maji can say i have this yeah and then they tell you you go and produce and uh, we'll see whether we can buy it mm. or do they commission you from the very beginning mm -hmm. and what kind of resources are we talking about I'm not without necessarily di diverging in terms of figures in terms okay. of what kind of support do you yeah. get from such um, a media house all right so there's two ways i think that most people have gone about it for this particular show we went and pitched we had an idea we had a deck we called up some of the people there and said look um this is what we're thinking of doing um we'd like to produce um eight originally it was uh, seven episodes mm -hmm. we, we pushed it up to eight um and they bought the idea and commissioned it now there are other um, people who produce content and then go and give them finished products and say we're going to we would like to license this um, mm. this to you and then you know that's licensed then you retain you know some of those rights then there's of course co-productions but for this one it was it was a so commission in terms of which of, means that yeah. the copyright the rights belong yes. to the rights belong to to, uh, to magic. Maisha magic so i have intellectual property rights of course mm. but um, but the the rights for the show that themselves you know do that the same way that if you were to produce for netflix that mm. happens um in terms of cost let's let's put it this way um a series like that would set um um Maisha magic back you know something in the order of uh, like two hundred thousand dollars right uh, how much two hundred thousand dollars about 20 million shillings no, right it's a lot more than 20 million well yes and the exchange rate of 120. <laughs> <laughs> well yes okay. it said 24 million there. 24 million yeah yes. uh -huh. um, <laughs> city i'm being modest here <laughs> um um but it's not and i think this is what people need to understand it's yeah. not 200,000 that comes to John Allen's pocket Missy Pigo and get up it it is um 200,000 that goes into um procuring getting the show on air. getting the show on air transport travel in this country has become a lot cheaper than it was mm. but it's still Crazy. really expensive mm. um, why is it expensive 
just sometimes being able to get to location. So, for instance, if you were to go from from um, ten years ago, if you were to go from from uh, from Nairobi to Moyale, that would be a day and a half a yes. journey. Now it's a day's journey because of the road. Yeah. But that's just the road to Moyale. Yeah. If you wanted to enter now, oh, in, in inside, in if there was a story in the Chalbi Desert, yeah. Then you're back to square one. Yeah. No that takes a that takes a big car. That mm -hmm. takes a driver. That takes someone who knows the location. Yeah. It takes a lot, just to be able to get sometimes one interview. You have to engage four or five people. Mm -hmm. Then there's your crew. There's uh, there's your 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 DOP. There's uh, someone who's doing sound. Mm -hmm. uh, there's you. You know, um, you have to take care of your costs yeah. um, in the office. When you go back, post production is not free. Yeah. You know, so so a lot of that money goes really into producing a show. Um, and look, and this is not to to be disrespectful to to multi choice, because they really are some of the only, one of the only games in town when it mm. comes to. Um, um, supporting investing and areas. investing in these kinds of ideas mm. um, but I really do wish um, for more people more players not not just not so that they can compete with multi-choice but mm. just so that there's a multiplicity like there's a universe mm. of content yep. that's about us in every fashion yep. YouTube's kind of stepping in there but you want content people who are engaged in content to not just earn from their work, mm. but to earn and retire, you know, on mm. off of the proceeds of the work that they do. That that for me would be, you know, and multi choice is really playing an important role in there. But let's not forget, I mean, you know, um, we we need other um, players in we this industry to, in. to start to to do this. Mm. Um, but kudos and shout out to to multi choice because if without Without them, a lot of the shows that people have now come to know and love mm. would not have been able to get that chance. Indeed. Yeah. If you look at uh, the Kalasha Awards, mm. I mean, many of the winners of exactly. the Kalasha Awards are shows that are have on, appeared, on different multi choice channels. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And it tells you where the money is coming from, That's where the investment is, is coming from, and the belief yeah. in those kinds of ideas. Mm. So one day, I'm hoping that uh, the Standard Group will have half of the winners, you know, for, for the Kalashas come from the Standard Group, mm. you know. Um, best radio show of the year, mm. you know, can be here. Mm. So it's not just known on the streets. You guys have a plaque somewhere, mm. you know, and, and that kind of investment mm. is, uh, is important. It is. Yeah. John, thank you very much for sharing his ads or, or yeah. on this show so we are gearing up for sunday for 8 sunday. p.m again yes it's on maisha magic plus uh, mm. on dstv it's your moment make sure that you watch this the premiere of the last door investigative cr true crime investigative series mm -hmm. by african sunset and donal and namu and all the work that you've done it's uh stuff stuff to talk about thank in you in the next hour we want to talk about what the president said yesterday Ooh. which is about you know Yes. The justice system, mm. uh, investigations, that, extrajudicial that killings, <laughs> that <laughs> cannot demand, <laughs> and what happened. Yeah. And this is an open invitation for you to stay on. Uh, so we have that conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stay on for a bit. And Good. Then I'll head out. Good. Yeah. So we can see. I mean, so what, what are we talking about when it comes to observation, observing the rule of law, mm. Mm. or about maintaining the law and order, mm -hmm. about making sure that um, anybody who gets, goes off the main line in terms mm. of following the law actually then is put to task for it okay this is kenya's biggest conversation it's the situation remember to watch the last door this sunday on my shamajik plus